if I'd have said, well, television is more popular than Jesus, I might have got away with it, you know? But as I just happened to be talking to a friend, I used the word Beatles as a remote thing. Not as what I think of as Beatles, as if there was other Beatles, the way other people see us. But I just said that they were having more influence on kids and things than anything else, including Jesus. But I said it in that way, which was the wrong way, yep, yep. Now, some teenagers have repeated your statement saying that they like the Beatles more than Jesus Christ. Well, originally I was pointing out that fact in reference to England, that we meant more to kids than Jesus did, or religion at that time. And I wasn't knocking it or putting it down. I was just saying it as a fact. That it's sort of, it's true, especially more for England than for here. And I'm not saying they were better or greater or comparing us with Jesus Christ as a person or God as a thing or whatever it is, you know. I, I just said what I said and it was wrong or was taken wrong. And now it's all this. John Lennon's statement in 1966 about the Beatles being more popular than Jesus caused widespread controversy, particularly in the United States, where it led to public outrage, boycotts of Beatles music, and record burnings. Lennon later attempted to clarify and apologize for his remarks, explaining that he was not comparing himself or the Beatles to Jesus, but rather commenting on the state of religion and youth culture at the time. However, the damage was done, and the backlash remained significant. In 1980, Lennon was tragically assassinated by Mark David Chapman, an obsessed fan who cited Lennon's statement as one of his motivations for the act. Chapman shot Lennon outside his New York City apartment, leading to his death. Lennon's assassination is often viewed through different lenses. Some see it as a tragic result of an unstable individual's actions, emphasizing the dangers of fame and the vulnerabilities of public figures. Others interpret it as a form of divine retribution for his controversial statement about Jesus, viewing his violent death as a consequence of his perceived blasphemy. If you, as an American teenager, are offended by statements from a group of foreign singers which strike at the very basis of our existence as God-fearing, patriotic citizens, then we urge you to take your Beatle records, pictures, and souvenirs to the pickup point about to be named, and on the night of the Beatles' appearance in Memphis, August 19th, they will be destroyed in a huge public bonfire at a place to be named soon. Stay tuned to Wacky for further development. Now, this religious controversy, I know you don't want to say too much about it, but does it worry that it's going to boil up when you get to the States? Well, it worries me, yes. But I, I hope everything will be all right in the end of the day. Well, I think, I think the Beatles are a real talented group, but I think that they need to watch what they say because they're in such a position that a, a lot of teenagers really think of them as something really big. And, and when they say things like that, some teenagers are going to just believe anything they say. Regardless of the interpretation, Lennon's story serves as a powerful reminder of the impact of words and the potential repercussions of public statements that touch on deeply held beliefs and values. It underscores the need for respect and sensitivity when discussing spiritual matters, highlighting the lasting influence of influence of influential figures on society's cultural and religious landscape. Marilyn Monroe, one of Hollywood's most iconic figures, had a life marked by both immense fame and deep personal struggles. Her tragic death at the age of 36 has been the subject of much speculation and interpretation particularly in the context of her relationship with spirituality and Christianity. According to accounts, when evangelist Billy Graham visited Monroe during a performance, he told her that the Spirit of God had sent him to preach to her, Monroe reportedly responded. I don't need your Jesus. A few days later, on August 5, 1962, she was found dead in her Brentwood, Los Angeles apartment. The official cause of death was a barbiturate overdose which was ruled a probable suicide. Some people link her dismissive response to Graham with her untimely death, suggesting it was a form of divine retribution or the result of her rejection of Christianity. However, Monroe's life and death were complex and multifaceted. She endured a troubled childhood, numerous mental health issues, and a series of tumultuous relationships. Her struggles with addiction and mental health were well documented and likely played a significant role in her demise. Monroe's interaction with Billy Graham is often highlighted as a symbolic moment reflecting her disconnection from spiritual faith. Yet her death circumstances involve a confluence of factors, 
including personal, psychological, and societal pressures. Monroe's story is a poignant reminder of the vulnerabilities and challenges faced by public figures. It also underscores the potential consequences of rejecting spiritual or moral guidance, according to some interpretations. Her life and tragic end continue to captivate and intrigue, serving as a complex narrative about fame, personal demons, and the search for peace and fulfillment. Thomas Andrews, the chief designer of the arms Titanic, is often remembered as a symbol of human arrogance due to the widespread belief at the time that the Titanic was unsinkable. Andrews, along with the White Star Line and the ship's builders at Harland and Wolfe, promoted the Titanic as the epitome of modern engineering and maritime safety. The ship was equipped with advanced safety features, including watertight compartments and remotely activated watertight doors, which contributed to the perception that it was impervious to disaster. Despite these safety measures, on the night of April 14, 1912, during its maiden voyage, the Titanic struck an iceberg in the North Atlantic. The collision caused a fatal breach in the ship's hull, leading to the rapid flooding of multiple compartments. Within a few hours, the Titanic sank, resulting in the deaths of over 1,500 people, including Andrews himself. The Titanic disaster is often seen as a powerful lesson in the dangers of human arrogance and overconfidence. The ship's supposed invincibility led to complacency in both its design and operation. For instance, the ship did not carry enough lifeboats for all passengers and crew, a decision based partly on the belief that they would never be need for a full-scale evacuation. Thomas Andrews is remembered not only for his role in designing the Titanic, but also for his actions during the disaster. As the ship was sinking, he was seen tirelessly helping passengers into lifeboats, distributing life vests, and urging people to evacuate. Andrews reportedly stayed on board until the very end, trying to save as many lives as possible. The tragedy of the Titanic serves as a grim reminder of the limitations of human ingenuity and the unpredictable power of nature. It underscores the consequences of excessive pride and the assumption that technological advancements can render us immune to disaster. Andrew's dedication in the face of catastrophe highlights the contrast between human vulnerability and the false sense of security that often accompanies technological progress. His story is a testament to both the achievements and the failings of human endeavor, marked by the sobering reality that even the most advanced creations are not infallible. What do you want to talk about? What do you believe? I don't know. What do you believe in? Uh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah! Yeah. Do you expect when for you to yeah. say that that I'm gonna disrespect you because of your belief? No, no. I just uh, I, I don't know your religious views. Okay. I could guess, but I don't know. I'm not religious. I don't haven't found a religion yet. Oh, uh, okay. Unless you want to recommend something to me. I recommend Christianity. It's okay. pretty so awesome. Like a pamphlet or something? Uh, a Bible. Uh, you could download the Bible yeah. app. No, but I want it from you. You no, know so much. sorry. Yeah. I want you, you know so much. I know very little, but... You got this big ass head, but no. I, I do have a big head. Yeah. Do you have a Bible? No. You don't have anything to tell no. me? Where, where do you think you go when you die? Um, nowhere. Like, nothing does. Why do you believe that? Because that's science. Science tells you you go nowhere when you die? Okay, well, can you explain to... If you think... Okay. Yeah. Have this, what do you think happens? How do you think that works when we die? The science behind it? Well, actually, Genuine. neuroscience has over 25,000 different pieces of evidence to show people have afterlife experiences okay. in just the last decade. Okay. Every real, every civilization in the history of the world has believed in an afterlife oh, yeah. or a god. Oh, yeah. Why is science right now and everyone else is wrong? Because they didn't have the science and the modern technologies that we have now. So what discovery has disproven the afterlife? Um, probably scientific, but no one can actually confirm because unless you're coming back to life, then nobody can confirm that yet. So you can't disprove it. And you can't prove it either. So it takes faith. Yeah. I have faith. Yeah, and I don't. So, and you know what? If you think that that's going to happen, then that's fine. Okay. I'm not so, mad at you for So that. how did the world come into existence? The Big Bang. So the Big Bang, so, 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 who, so the Big Bang made space, time, and matter. What started the Big Bang? No one knows. Not God. Well, but the, the laws of physics mean that there must be a... How did God get there? 
I'm confused. That's a genuine. Like everybody but, but, says. But God, o- first, but God always is. There? But how did it get there? There's that's no, my question. That's a good question. Yeah, okay. So, so, re- so Christianity would argue that it is is. The Alpha and the Omega, it always is. But the universe had a starting point. So therefore, whatever made the universe predated the universe. That's God, isn't it? If you believe in a Big we Bang... We say that's a lot of different things, but why does it always have to come back to God? Well, whatever you can call it, you can call it the idea of God. But if you believe in the Big Bang, which you say you did, it means that space, time, and matter had a beginning, which means that something made that beginning happen. Do you believe in the Big Bang happening? Or do you yes, I believe God started the Big Bang. He spoke it into existence. He spoke it into existence. Yes. I'm just still confused on how this works. Well, because, look, the first words of my Bible are the same of your view. Okay. In the beginning. Okay. You believe the Big Bang was the beginning. I believe in a Big Bang. Okay. So maybe God made it happen. Or, but, what's your explanation? I don't have an explanation because I don't study science. But I don't study faith. Okay, that's fair enough. You know? So I'm not going to put bullshit on my ass to tell no, you that, that, That's fine. 